Oh, New Fantasyland. An unexpected bonus episode because I did not expect this soft open to happen before I left. And this was, this was like the week I moved away from Florida, so I was shocked that I was actually able to get to this soft open. Nice. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Yep. New Fantasyland yep. soft open. New Fantasyland soft open! Yes, I was lucky enough to be visiting Magic Kingdom on a day where there just happened to be a dress rehearsal for the Enchanted Forest, the crown jewel of the new Fantasyland expansion. No big deal. The Seven Dwarves minecart ride is still under construction, but most of the expansion is functional, so let's take a look. We'll start in the back. Of but the now half of that ride is in our Snow White anyway, so... Quite as much. First, they've reopened Ariel's Grotto, home of the Ariel meet and greet. Step right up and take your picture with an actress whose legs fell asleep an hour ago. Then, the White Witch of Narnia turned Ariel into wood and fastened her to the front of a ship, signaling the entrance to the Little Mermaid ride. The queue winds you through the outside of Prince Eric's castle before taking you inside Ariel's cave, which has been hit by a storm, scattering all of the human junk. Holographic CGI crabs are putting things away, but if they put the wrong thing in the pile, it's to a kid to point at them. That's the whole game. Most of the time, they put the right thing in the right pile, but if it's the wrong thing, they just wait around to be pointed at, making this the first ever theme park attraction based on press space to win. Then you get to Robot Not Buddy Hackett, and just like There's the movie, reference. he looks at human things and makes shit up about them. My, my review of this two games, all you can update is strength! <laughs> 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 Isn't it hilarious when people speak declaratively about cultures they don't understand? Not if your Epcot video is any indication. Oh, shut up. Then you get to the ride itself, which I've been reliably informed is identical to the recent California Adventure yeah, ride. special eyes. So I won't go into too much detail since I know some jerk with camera is planning on tackling this. As soon as yeah, as Scuttle as is voiced by Chris Edgerly, yes, who... Uh, this is much more advanced than most Fantasyland Dark Rides. Predates Grunkle Stan with that voice. It's more like a lower-scale hmm. haunted mansion, right down to the ride system. Except while Haunted Mansion's super impressive graveyard scene is at the end, this ride's most elaborate scene is under the seat, square in the middle. And hey, the ride actually has kissed the girl. Although, somehow they do even less with Ursula's defeat than the Hollywood Studios live show. And I thought that wasn't possible. Then we stroll from wherever the hell Prince Eric lives to France, home of Belle's Village. There's Bonjour Gifts, which is supposed to look like the bookshop, but has a depressing lack of books. But hey, it's about time somebody thought of putting a gift shop in a theme park. Then there's Gaston's Tavern, a quick service restaurant modeled after the home of the funniest villain song to ever not be part of the South Park movie. And outside the tavern is a statue of Gaston. I have a lot to say about Gaston. fake bookstores and, and theme Gaston parks in the Blizzard Yeah. Greetings. Gaston, a quick, a quick word for your adoring fans. What can I say, really? I adore all of my fans. I can only do them all. I do my best for them. That's why I'm here. I can't, I can't help but notice that your tavern doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it. No, it doesn't. I also, I, I filmed this bit long before people were constantly going viral for interacting with uh, Fantasyland Gaston. You were early adopters. Yeah, long, long before that one dude challenged him to a push-up contest or that one girl scolded him and all those other many clips of, uh, of new Fantasyland Gaston that would reach far and wide. Mm -hmm. But uh, my clip was not viral enough i suppose you don't need it you're just you're cool enough without it you don't need alcohol to be cool kids there's plenty of antlers inside and a dartboard you do use antlers in all of your all of my decorating especially good at expectorating just go check out check that out inside but do try the blue check out his fit inside apparently which is apple juice with toasted marshmallow and like Mango, passion, something. It's some mixture of fruits. Apparently, they just uh, they have a similar drink over at Cards Land, but this one is themed after a better movie. So let's see. This is the only time I really did a taste test sort of thing in a script video, which is another staple of theme park content that I <laughs> could. Yeah. When you get to the top, you can taste like the mango stuff. And to wait for Boysenberry Festival before we can get really, really get into it. Yeah. There's no butterbeer, but it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, there were really things like tasting cards in Florida when I lived there. Like, there was food and wine, but you had to buy everything individually. So I would get, like, one thing every time. And that was it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, this drink was basically apple juice, and uh, my wife's allergic to apples, so I, it is not a regular part of my theme park diet anymore. Oh no. <laughs> It's a little touch that not a lot of people will notice, but I really like how the ambient music from this area includes instrumentals of songs from both the movie and the Broadway show. I don't think many of the guests will recognize the melody from A Change in Me or Gaston's song that was just called me, but I got a kick out of it. But we're not done with Beauty and the Beast yet, because next is the Be Our Guest Restaurant, located in Beast Castle. Huh. Maurice really got lost outside Beast Castle? How? He can see the castle from his house. Belle must have walked right past the entrance every day on her way to town. Maurice must have really been going in circles. This map is only five years old. Toontown Fair must still be around here somewhere. Now, when I went, VR <laughs> Guest wasn't open for business yet, but we got to peek inside the main ballroom, and it's quite gorgeous. And unlike the tavern, this actually will have... I guess the spiritual successor to that joke is, oh my god, where are the work walls? <laughs> Quick service by day. <laughs> Why not just make it full service the whole time? Not like there's a total lack of quick service restaurants in fantasy land. No, whatever. I'm more excited about the atmosphere than the menu anyway. Finally, we look at a unique experience in New Fantasyland, Enchanted Tales with Belle. The queue takes you into Maurice's cottage, which has tons of great details, such as a portrait of Belle's mother who's way out of Maurice's league. Although some of the details actually in the movie are missing, like that nifty overdressed keyhole, but that's a nitpick. Eventually, you make your way from the living room into Maurice's workshop, where a cast member will tell you about the tools and inventions. I also used a lot of post-production stabilization on this video, uh, and I don't necessarily recommend it because sometimes it makes shots look weird and wobbly. The cast member will tell you about the mirror on the wall. What about the mirror? The mirror? It's very nice mirror. Well, they'll tell you about it after they get the cue that it's time to move on. That was called the tour guide improving until they free up the supercharged space. Yeah, they should get them some better stalling <laughs> for this one. But once they hear the clock chime, then they'll tell you about it. This mirror was actually a gift from the beast. It's not a very subtle signal for them, is it? It's not. <laughs> not, no, not in the slightest. And also think, like, because all of this was just the same visit, I, I'm always, like, thinking back to it, like, going, like, the cast member said, like, oh, yeah, it's a very nice mirror. And then after the bell times, it's like, oh, yeah, we're actually going to tell you about the mirror now. It's like, you can yep. easily just be like. Looks like a normal mirror, doesn't it? <laughs> Always answer a question with a question. That's how you stall. <laughs> the effect is very cool in person, though. Like, despite yeah. the, the stalling mm -hmm. and despite the nonsense it's a very cool effect yeah i had to do a double take when i first saw the video because this was the first footage of this attraction that i had seen welcome back to the day Melon beast Bellin then you walk through the door that used to be a mirror and now we're in beast castle and that wow, is trippy <laughs> set up for an attraction we're having a perfectly normal day looking at the dark, secluded room of the guy who plays with axes and suddenly TARDIS mirrors. Gentlemen, I think we finally figured out the perfect way to encapsulate the magic of Beauty and the Beast on a theme park attraction. Two words, time travel. <laughs> and the full Birdemic clip. One thing, one thing that would have been done differently had this video been even just a few months later is that uh, instead of this using this footage, this would have been Artie sketch. Oh my god! <laughs> You're right. Holy cow! I, I I would have had Nick be the one pitching. Uh, it, like it's got to have time travel in the attraction. That's the only way to make it work. And uh, I, but this um, I think by the time this video was. Out, we had done the uh, the the Glee sketch, but obviously, Artie was not Florida the beloved was... character he would become. 
Yes, yeah. exactly. And uh, uh, this video was almost done, you know, by the time we did the Glee sketch, and I did not think at the time, like, oh, while we're doing this, we can also do this this other, like, this character would be great for this other thing. Because it wasn't until later, it, it wasn't until the Blitzstrap of Ganza that uh, I used the pretty bit for the for the Twister sequence. Right. That we really unlocked the potential of how we can be used to uh, explain strange decisions in theme park development. But uh, but yeah, as it is, I just used Birdemic footage because why not? Which uh, then you also used uh, this sound clip video later, Charlie. I did, and I knew that I had to use like the terrible sound editing in it as well. So it would be recognizable. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Ah, oh, what a time. Because this movie has one of, some of the worst sound editing. <laughs> it is yeah, almost wild. unwatchable because of that. Yeah, it's like, it's like in the pantheon of famously bad movies, like I can enjoy The Room on its own, but I can't do Birdemic without riff tracks just because yeah. it's so like The Room at least had some competent people on the crew picking up the slack. Um, yeah. Someone has to know what they're doing. Otherwise, it's yeah. just unwatchable. Yes. Um. Uh, Birdemic had talented people in front of the camera, but they were getting no direction. Um, but Whitney Moore has gone on to be a, uh, a, a vibrant online personality who has uh, been one of the people speaking out against Max Landis. Um, uh, <laughs> Just hanging out, hanging out. Hanging out with the family. Having ourselves a party. I mean, Gaston's walking around outside, so we already accept that the movie hasn't ended yet, so why do we now need to go back in time to a point in the movie? And we're entering through the cottage to get into the castle, even though there's a perfectly good castle entrance next door? Man, this attraction's pre-show raises more questions than freaking Prometheus. Anyway, now we're in a hallway, and the wardrobe is... That was a timely joke. <laughs> At the time, topical. Oh I'm so excited. I'm so excited that I'm not going to move at all. Well, except for my head. I'll move my head, but that's it. Okay. I'm I shot the same day because I thought of that joke like right away. Movie if she's also going to be a functioning wardrobe, and at least her face is quite expressive. Tonight's the night Belle and the Beast fall in love. At least we hope so. And to help move things along, you're all going to surprise Belle and act out the story of all they meant. Oh, I can hardly wait. I can't wait either. Is everyone excited? Yeah. Woo! Wonderful. And we have enough parts for everyone. So they started signing audience participation. <laughs> oh, I've also seen after last season, and it is, uh, yeah, it is even worse than Birdem. Friends, the enchanted portraits. They're always laughing. Wait, they are? This is turning into one of those school plays where they make up last minute roles just so nobody feels left out. The lobster? Yeah. In the nativity play. Love yeah, actual leaf clip. There was more than one lobster present at the birth of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Who gets to portray me? Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that had to be masked out frame by frame. <laughs> yep, um, that's your hero. <laughs> and we have gone. Well, fortunately, as good as the animation on Animaniac was, there was enough like stillness that it didn't have to be every single frame. But uh, I realized after the fact I should find if I still have the original source footage and make that a meme template clip for all to use. Uh, but uh, I would need that to find would, that out. Would be, yes. You would be uh, would in to service out. to your country. <laughs> yeah. And now that we are past this uh, eight-hour mark, how's that Patreon doing? 
Uh, still no new patrons and earlier. Um, Boo. Oh, no. Boo. No, 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 no. Everyone is... Everyone is welcome to enjoy the freebies. I I, uh, I understand time. No obligations. Are no obligations at all. Uh, okay, you have not told me about this dream. You have not told you about this dream, Max. But uh, <laughs> I'm interesting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Somebody needs to turn that into something. <laughs> that um, feels like a key and peel sketch almost. Or <laughs> kids uh, right. in the hall. Whoever was good at non sequiturs. Yeah. Family guy. Library and pan. I thought the Jeopardy set looked smaller in person than on camera. This is tiny. Not quite the grandeur of the movie's library. Of course, they have to fit two libraries in the building so they can offset two performances of the show and move the line along more quickly, so I'll accept it. Little freeze effects there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> flavor. On the mantle is Lumiere, who might be the best animatronic I've ever seen. Sure, his face is just a screen, we've all seen that before, but his body motion is fluid, and aside from the fact that he just stands in one it's place, a great animatronic. Really like the cartoon character mm -hmm. yeah. It took me a long time to realize that probably most of the control mechanisms are like in the black void behind him, like operating yes. his hand to run up its style. It's like the fireys and labyrinth, you know, just being on the black velvet mm -hmm. background where the performers mm -hmm. are in, like entirely black velvet. Like there's suit. there's sticks behind. Specifically a prisoner, yeah. and I haven't had contact with another human being in months. So seeing a room full of forests is mind-blowingly shocking. I cannot tell if I would like to do this attraction for the cool effects or not want to do this attraction for all of the weird parasocial audience participation and interaction. Because I am not part uh, of that life. <laughs> it is it is pretty easy to not be picked for audience participation in this show. So, because we are adults. Yeah. <laughs> this was another one where it was hard to come up with jokes for, so I just wrote references. Enactment of the most traumatic experience of her life rather well. Yes, uh, Holy Grail would have been the obvious reference to make, but uh, but I, I, I thought of the naughty 90s with Abbott and Costello, and it specifically had both the galloping and the neighing, so I was happy to use that. <laughs> the children march around the room to one of the best Disney songs. You were also born 80, so it's fine. Yes, I was born 80 years old. Keep going, son. That's the way. Right out the door, Mark Fire Escape. There you go. Which is also why I use that. Which is why I use that Bob Newhart routine there. Yep. There, see, that didn't take eight seasons, although it was devoid of Neil Patrick Harris. Then all the participants get a souvenir bookmark and a picture with Belle before she goes off to eat and dance to an Oscar song, and we all exit through a door that comes out the side of a mountain, and we might still be in the past. I don't. Despite some confusing theming, I can easily Future rock. see children being delighted by this. It's more theatrical than a boring meet and greet, but still more hands-on and intimate than a full-fledged show. And I'm sure kids who try this out will grow up looking back on it with fond memories. But enough sentiment, let's get down to the cold hard business. Is New Fantasyland going to crush Wizarding World? Nope. Probably. 
in optics. We'll get to my full thoughts on Wizarding World. So I mean, it's, it's aged better than Wizarding World, just in, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not it's less awkward. awkwardly. This does have the advantage of not being nearly as claustrophobic as Wizarding World. We'll see how crowded it gets when the opening is no longer soft. And also, Disney World still did better attendance than Universal did even when they had Wizarding yeah, World. They're, they're, they're exactly. Disney World. Magic Kingdom is still like the most visited park on the planet. Before this, there yep. was no comparison. Disneyland's Fantasyland blew Magic Kingdoms out of the Ah, I have a new patron. Thank you, Catherine Esperanza. Hey! If you're discounting attractions, you might still be unimpressed with the East Coast Fantasyland. All right, well, I'll count that as two. <laughs> <laughs> you want uh, uh, uh read, the glorified sprinkler and a bunch of cat registers. There's still no Matterhorn, Pinocchio, or Mr. Toad, and now there's not even a Snow White. And the Enchanted Forest may seem like an awful lot of space to devote to only two movies, even though they're both more classic than the one franchise California recently devoted so much of its far more limited space to. Although at least it makes venom for the Axis of Anarchy smile. Nice choice. <laughs> Go die in it. It was so rare to recognize a working actor in a Disney Park commercial that I had to, uh, it, it, especially an actor that I have technically worked with. So it, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I have to make reference. Um, she's very nice in person. Uh, she, she is, uh, very cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I had to shout that out. <laughs> but even if you think they've dedicated too much space to too few attractions from too few movies, you can't deny that they're going all out with the space surrounding those few attractions. For what may be the first time ever, here is a fantasy land where the focus isn't exclusively on short, kitty dark rides, but also on walking around the world those rides are set in. I don't know about you, but I never really walked around taking in a fantasy land the same way I did in Adventureland or Frontierland or even a Main Street. Most of the ride facades were interchangeable, and once you got the overall theming, be it a castle or a village, there wasn't that much more to the atmosphere. But the Enchanted Forest? I'd probably take a stroll around even if I didn't feel like riding its one ride. So overall, Disneyland's Fantasyland still has plenty of actual content that's sorely missing from Disney World, but the Enchanted Forest alone is a better context than anything else in either coast's Fantasyland. And who knows, maybe the Seven Dwarves Mine Ride will be so good that Californians will wish they had that. I'm sure some Floridians will gladly... I mean, now. Everyone yeah. wants Mr. Toad's Wild. In the meantime, Damn it's not a total mm -hmm. game changer in the theme park industry or anything. Don't you take the spooky the out of that. Kingdom, and it goes you keep hell right, right where it belongs. And less vastly inferior, at least. There was a witch who was an evil queen. Ending with some Jonathan Colton. Of course. Um, answer the question. My first, uh, my first job in Hollywood ever. Uh, it was an internship, so I wasn't paid. But I worked. I was on crew of season three of The Guild, uh, and that was in the summer of 2009 when I was here for a college internship program. And uh, yeah, that was my first like professional crew job in Hollywood. And uh, I, yeah, met all the cast. They were all very cool. That was the first season that Will Wheaton was on, and I was like, for I was forbidden from telling anybody that Will Wheaton was going to be on the show, um, <laughs> which you know, because it, it it was the big surprise at the end of uh, first episode of the season. Um, but yeah, the uh, the cast and crew were all very cool. Uh, and, you know, I haven't kept up with any of them, obviously, because I was just a little intern on set, but, uh, <laughs> uh, there are actually, there are a couple of crew members I've seen since then who remember me, but, but like none of the cast remembers me, none of the, none of the cast remembers me and why would they? <laughs> um, I mean, really, but, uh, realistically, the best you have now is Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> Yeah, although I haven't seen him in person in a few years at this point, so uh, I think he'd recognize me, but I don't know if he'd remember my name anymore. Right. 